Yeah, amongst both four and four to see. Right here. Mm. What does this one go, Doctor? This one's in shock, nurse. Let's get him to the ward Doctor, a right away. His blood pressure is low. Okay, let's get him tagged into the ward. All right, let's get over to the next one. Easy. Where are we going to put them all? Roger. Over here. Take him to ward B. Possible concussion. Fractured tibia. Okay, let's get him tagged into ward C. Let's move. a special one. It was built in a day. Impossible? Not at all. Actually, it was assembled in less than 12 hours. And here's a fact that's equally possible. Your community hospital can be destroyed in a day, even in one blinding flash. Have you ever stopped to think where you'd be without a hospital? What would happen if some wiped out your hospital? If this nation is successfully attacked with thermonuclear weapons, it is possible that up to 70% of all hospital beds could be destroyed or their use temporarily denied due to damage or radioactive fallout. And ironically, this loss would come at a time when we would actually need more hospitals because of the mounting numbers of sick and injured people. Or if your community is hit by a calamitous natural disaster, such as a flood or tornado, again, nearby hospitals may be destroyed, certainly overloaded. No hospital. Frightening thought, isn't it? To meet this threat, the Department of Health, Education and Welfare, Public Health Service, administers a program to assure adequate hospital care after a disaster, the Packaged Disaster Hospital, a vital part of the nation's coordinated civil defense effort. The Packaged Disaster Hospitals, or PDHs as they're often called, are flexible. They can be used to expand the capabilities of an existing hospital or they can be set up rapidly in buildings such as community centers or schools. Classrooms become wards. Separate ward areas would be set up at the direction of the chief of staff, according to the numbers and types of patients received. Other classrooms could become operating rooms. The PDH is an austere but functional 200-bed medical and surgical hospital. It contains a 30-day stock of medical supplies and equipment for emergency care, sufficient to handle up to 1,000 patients without resupply. Here, a gymnasium becomes the reception area where patients are sorted according to the doctor's diagnosis and sent to the proper ward or other appropriate section of the hospital. Medical and administrative records are started here to assist the smooth, efficient operation of the hospital. Still other areas of the school would be converted into a pharmacy. A room with running water becomes a clinical laboratory capable of conducting basic diagnostic testing. An effective x-ray department using radiographic paper that is processed in just 60 seconds, or a fluoroscopic screen. Then there's a central supply area to store and dispense supplies and equipment in small quantities as needed by other sections of the hospital. 
with a sterilization capability for items such as surgical instruments, dressings, and gowns. In addition, supplies include gasoline generators to take over if local electric service is interrupted. And a 1,500 gallon water tank, cover, and pumping unit to hold and dispense an emergency water supply. A PDH is stored, whenever possible, in or near the building to be used as the hospital operating site where it is becoming difficult for states and communities to obtain suitable space in existing buildings, many communities are building reasonably priced structures specifically for disaster hospital storage. Supplies and equipment require about 7,000 gross cubic feet of space. Weighing almost 50,000 pounds, the material is stored in 660 crates to facilitate transportation, handling, and long-term storage. Since some supplies are sensitive to temperature extremes, both heating and refrigerating facilities are necessary, as well as protection for flammable materials. Regular quality control inspections ensure the up-to-date usability of sensitive supplies such as antibiotics, x-ray film, even flashlight batteries. The humidity indicator packed with the generators is periodically checked along with other equipment to ensure operational readiness. Packaged disaster hospitals would be most needed in major population centers and in high-density industrial areas. But such places are as likely for attack as military installations. And the PDHs stored too close to these probable attack areas would be lost along with all existing hospitals. On the other hand, positioning disaster hospitals too far from population centers would ensure their safety, yes, but would reduce their value to the community. So federal-state agreements on individual locations are worked out according to federal location criteria, taking any special circumstances and state emergency readiness plans into consideration. In an all-out thermonuclear attack on this country, up to one million hospital beds could be destroyed or otherwise rendered useless. How to replace these beds? The obvious answer is packaged disaster hospitals. Staffed with available surviving medical personnel, it is estimated that they could provide care for 10 million patients for the first month after the attack. At the present time, about 3,000 PDHs have already been prepositioned in various communities or stored in public health service emergency medical stockpiles. Reassuring, isn't it? Even in the face of a major disaster, the hospital facilities will still be available. But remember this, the federal government stocks the PDH with only medical supplies and equipment and some simple tools and housekeeping materials. It's up to the local community and hospitals to provide the rest. A staff, certain non-medical supplies, supportive services, and the vital pre-planning. Carefully select a one or two story building with a minimum of 15,000 square feet of floor space. Prepare a floor plan to adapt the building for use as a packaged disaster hospital. Prepare a detailed written plan describing how the hospital is to be set up and operated. When the hospital is not stored at the operating site, arrangements must be made to get it there. What's more, 
ambulances and other vehicles will be needed to transport patients and to serve as utility vehicles for the hospital. Extra supplies that will be needed include gasoline for equipment such as generators and sterilizer burners, motor oil for the generators, bottled gas, and electrical supplies such as extension cords and connections. And then there are narcotics, vital to a hospital operation. These drugs are not stored with the hospital, but should be obtained from drug stores, physicians' offices, drug supply houses, or veterinary hospitals in conformance with the procedure approved by the Bureau of Narcotics. But here again, plans must be made to get them to the PDH after a disaster. Laundry services will be needed. Linens, operating room gowns, and patient gowns will be in short supply. Patients will be moving through in hundreds. Another basic need is a food preparation capability, a way to serve patients and the food itself. Providing all these services requires careful planning. And then, people. Personnel to use the equipment, operate the disaster hospital. Doctors, nurses, nurses aides, hospital administrators, pharmacists, laboratory technicians, x-ray technicians. The same type of medical personnel necessary for any hospital. The local community hospital is the best source for these people. Equally important are the supporting personnel, the people to keep the hospital functional, electricians who know how to effectively use the emergency generator, carpenters, plumbers, people prepared to rig emergency heating, an alternate water supply, someone who understands methods of waste disposal, should the sanitation facilities be disrupted. And helpers, people, the local hospital staff and residents of the community. It's up to them to plan and operate the hospital. Orientation and training are a must for all the people who have been given disaster hospital assignments. Therefore, special PDH units are available which permit medical personnel to familiarize themselves with the equipment and the various components of the hospital. PDH supporting personnel also practice actually setting up the various functional units and operate the mechanical and electrical equipment. For training specialized groups, for handling of instruments and supplies is required, special training materials are made available. These supplies may be used in classroom situations for professionals such as nurses and technicians, or for non-professionals such as aides and orderlies. Comprehensive training, that's the way to be ready. You may never experience a natural disaster or a man-made one. But if you do, a packaged disaster hospital may become the most important thing in your life. It may mean your life. As soon as possible after the attack, the hospital is loaded at the storage site for transport to the operational location. This may be immediately after the attack or depending upon radiation levels, a few days or even a couple of weeks later. It is also possible that the hospital may be taken to a more distant location where the need is greater. Flexibility, it's a must for this type of operation. When the area is safe to move about in, the hospital starts rolling. This is where training begins to pay off. A quick, efficient setup of the disaster hospital. 
The seriously sick and injured will start moving in at any time now, and the hospital must be ready. are placed in the area where the contents will be used. And personnel are careful to prevent damage to contents during opening. Hospital activation. It's all according to plan. CD Control Center. This is McNamara Disaster Hospital. We're ready to receive patients. Over. McNamara PDH. This is Civil Defense Center. Roger. We'll begin routing patients to you right away. Good communication. It's a necessity in Roger. any emergency situation. As soon as radiation levels permit, rescue workers go into damaged areas. Casualties who have not received self-help are given first aid, and the seriously injured and ill removed to the PDA. Marie Larson, Larson, are you from Brockton? What's the reading? 76 over 30. Stretchers, get him up to Ward B. <laughs> the admitting area, a place where patients are sorted according to the urgency and type of injury or sickness. It's the nerve center of the hospital and provides an even flow of casualties into the proper treatment area. Not only must the doctor be highly competent, but he must be capable of quick, sound decisions, demonstrate mature judgment. Okay, I think we'd better get you down to x-ray. Nurse, will you redress this, please? Over here, take her down to x-ray. Mr. Roberts, you have some rather extensive burns there. It looks like you'll be with us for a while. We'll get you back in action again, though. Don't you worry about that. Hey, Dave, stretcher. All right, let's get this man down to Ward B. 
Each casualty receives the best available treatment and care. But always remember that the paramount consideration is the greatest good for the greatest number in the shortest possible time within the means available. It's a tough job, and the effective operation of the hospital depends on effective sorting of patients. X-ray equipment is especially suited for emergency conditions. It can be operated either on the community electric supply or on power provided by the emergency generator. The unit is designed primarily for examination of fractures and dislocations and for detection of foreign objects. Wards are austere. They don't have all the comfort you'd find in a modern, up-to-date hospital, but they are functional. Reusable supplies, such as syringes and needles, are purposely selected for disaster hospital use. A 30-day supply of disposable items would require far too much storage room and might be used up before replacement supplies became available. She's doing surgery at 3. Can we get the lab report right away? The laboratory contains the equipment and supplies for normal, basic clinical tests. Like every other department in the hospital, it operates around the clock, as long as the need continues. And then there's the pharmacy, with at least one medication for each essential therapeutic category. And as with the other sections, there's a 30-day supply. By the end of this period, more supplies will become available from strategically placed, protected federal stockpiles, or possibly from commercial sources. A well-organized, efficient central supply area is vital to the smooth operation of the hospital. A place where supplies such as utensils, basins, package dressings, towels, and special sterile packs are drawn by other sections of the hospital. With the large quantities of reusable supplies and equipment, the Central Supply Area's sterilization facility gets very heavy usage. An adequate supply of surgical materials must always be ready, plus syringes, needles, catheters, and all the other hospital equipment that must be sterile. Just a couple more chips. And finally, the operating room. Not exactly the most elaborate OR in the city, but it has all the equipment necessary to do the job. Here again, the equipment is designed for emergency conditions and to be reused time and again. The PDH may have to stay in business for many months, even a year or more while community hospitals are repaired or entirely rebuilt. As the disaster victims are cared for and discharged, the hospital settles down to a normal routine. Attention shift to more usual admissions, accidental injuries, heart attacks, tonsillitis, everyday illnesses. What is it? 104, 6. Better get him upstairs for a blood count. I'm pretty sure it's acute appendicitis. If he uh, 
Blood count confirms the diagnosis. Do we have your permission to operate? Yes, of course. Fine. And would you mind stepping over here and giving uh, the boy's medical history for us? Harvey, would you take care of this gentleman, please? Oh, how many dysenteries today? Oh, uh, let's see. Two, five, only eight. Good. Looks like we may be over the hump at last. Huh. He's a lucky boy. It hasn't ruptured. We can get it out without any drainage. What would your community do if its hospital were suddenly gone? Is there a PDH stored nearby? If so, is it receiving full community support? Your state health department can tell you where PDHs are stored in your state or whether your community meets the location criteria for having its own disaster hospital. Citizen action and interest before disaster strikes is vital to assure adequate hospital care after an earthquake, tornado, flood, or thermonuclear attack. If a packaged disaster hospital is to be ready when the need is greatest, the time to prepare is now. Thank you.